Hello, my name is Francis Bryce, sometimes known as The Rev, and I'm going to offer a spiritual response to one of the questions I've been sent today. So, the question I've been sent is, should politics and religion mix? Uh, there's slightly more detail than that from the person talking about their life and, and how that applies to their life. Um, but that's the core question, should politics and religion mix? And this is uh, obviously a, a juicy question, a, a question with some charge behind it, and one that many people will feel passionate about in some way. And the obvious answer for many people would be no. In the secular society that we live in, especially in the Western world, and in a world where we have seen uh, abuses of political power from uh, religious, essentially religious organisations, it's understandable that, that for many people it would be a, a quick and easy answer, no, the two things shouldn't be mixed. But I want to consider it a little more deeply. You know, one of the things that the person who sent this question in posited as, as to how it applies in his life is that when it comes to activism, uh, ecological activism or, or activism for a cause that you strongly believe in, for many people that will have an association with their spiritual or religious background. And, you know, when we look out into the world of charities, there are many wonderful charities that have a, a, an origin as a religious organisation. How much that informs their work now is not always easy to tell, but certainly they have that origin and it's part of their organisational history. So I think religions do potentially have a great deal to offer us in terms of um, them being starting grounds, places where uh, powerful movements begin because people are thinking deeply about their lives, deeply about the meaning of their lives and what they want to give to the world. Uh, because that sense of giving is often something that occurs or is taught in religious or spiritual communities and environments. Now further than that, there's something deeper for me, which is about what we really mean by religion or spirituality. So, in in strictest sense of, of organised religion, those big kind of organisational bodies, how much they should be involved in politics? Well, I'd say probably I, I would tend to avoid them being involved because really they're another organisation with their own agenda and their own organisational politics and a whole mess of stuff going on in terms of the interpersonal dynamics of the people involved. So to then take that body that in itself is, not, is often not unified in its vision and start forcing that agenda onto the political agenda which is messy enough on its own, I'm not sure that's a great idea. That's just my opinion, that's how I live with it. I invite you to ask the question of yourself and think deeply about what it means to you. Then there's another layer where I look at, you know, in the common way that the language is applied, spirituality rather than religion. So religion is often thought of as organised religion, and then spirituality being about your personal expression of your connection with spirit or the divine. And that, you know, I would love to see that involved in politics. There's a, a what I see as a kind of terrible drive to separate everything out, to partition ourselves as human beings. And I think we can only be most effective, we can only bring our richest and most relevant experience when we're integrated as a whole human being, when I am integrated as a whole human being, bringing with me all of what's most important to me and most meaningful to me. In some ways I think it is this separating out of different parts of ourselves that helps us to numb out in life. Um, there's a wonderful writer called Fred Kaufman about, who writes about business uh, and has a very spiritual inclination um, in his work uh, and he talks about the work-life balance and that how pernicious this phrase is because it suggests that um, that when I'm at work I'm not somehow not alive, I'm not living. He speaks very beautifully about this, this idea that uh, I go to work and I'm not quite alive and then I leave work and I go and live my life uh, and what the implication of that then is is that when I'm at work I'm on some kind of autopilot I'm not fully alive I'm not fully conscious of what I'm doing uh, all of which is much more likely to people failing to take responsibility to really act in integrity with their values 
the likelihood someone that will, will take an action doing a job with that mindset, this kind of work-life split mindset, the likelihood that someone doing their work with that kind of mindset is going to do something that they would never do if it related to their family, the likelihood that they'll fail to take responsibility for standing up and say, hey, I don't think what we're doing here is right. The likelihood that people will just follow orders on autopilot and uh, do potentially terrible things or things with um, consequences that they'd never want to live with is much higher with that kind of work-life balance or work-life split. So if we want organisations political or otherwise actually, but if we want organisations where every individual takes responsibility for the work that they're doing, not only individually but as an organisation, that every individual takes responsibility for speaking up if they think that the direction the organisation is, is going awry. If we want um, organisations and politi politics where people stand by what they believe in, not as a zealot or a fundamentalist, but because they really passionately believe that it's it's the for the best, the highest good of all involved, with a real spiritual devotion and an open heart, then we need to integrate people. We need to get them integrated in themselves and speaking from their whole beings. That's my belief. And what I find very interesting especially because religion is the word that tends to get used for organised religion and it therefore doesn't get applied to this, is that the root of the word religion is from a Latin root ligare, or religare. So ligare means to, to split apart, and then religare means to, to reconnect two things that have been split apart. Does that make sense? So religare means to take two things that have been separated and connect them back up. It's this uh, very similar root to the word uh, yoga. So yoga uh, has its roots in, in the same, same roots as the word yoke, which was uh, the way you would connect two buckets. It was a stick that connected two buckets so you could carry them. So yoke is also about connecting two things. Um, so I find it interesting that a word, religion, that is so often used to refer to the splitting off of spiritual life into a formal organisational setting. It actually its root meaning was about reconnecting two things. Uh, and for me that, that maybe gives us a pointer to what religion could be, to the potential for religion. And and sometimes is, so I don't want to dismiss all religions as, as not meeting that. But I, I think it gives us a pointer to what religion all religions could be that they could be about a reconnection of mind, body, spirit, a reconnection of, uh, of soul and life purpose with day-to-day -day work uh, and the more mundane parts of life. That really what I'd love to see is an integration, an integration of our whole selves into a connected being and that that being is the, part, is the, the entity, the, the person that steps forward to be a politician to be a dustman, to be a teacher, to be a chef. So although we started off with a question about religion and politics, I think really it's a question about uh, religion and life, or spirituality and life. As ever, I offer this response with love.